or up to $25,000 and this is Merrill. Yes, this is another planning grant um, that would allow um, the Topstone Mill at 101 Mulberry Street um, to look at the feasibility of creating 48 new units of housing. Okay. And I would just note housing is a big issue here as well as around the whole region. Um, and, uh, so you'd have to have a public hearing on that application. So. Okay. So the person who's looking to do this study is Topstone Holdings LLC. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to open a public hearing on this particular uh, application. Again, it's for it's a planning grant application for up to twenty five thousand dollars for funding for a planning application uh, to the region to the New Hampshire Community Development Finance Authority for Topstone Holdings LLC at one hundred one Mulberry Street, updating architect and engineers plans, and to study the feasibility of up to forty eight new units of housing. So I'm open to public hearing at this time. Anyone in the public that would like to make a comment on this particular application? Seeing none, I'm going to bring it back to the council. Council Stone and then Council Matt. I have a few questions. We'll start off with so they had an original plan that you have dealt with previously? Um, I didn't see a copy of that in our council packet. On the Mulberry Street property, um, they had. Which I want to say more than 10 years ago, they had an architect that was putting housing in there. And then they weren't certainly wanting to do housing. So they've got some old plans. And with this planning grant, they'll go back and update all of that, work on the engineering and any issues that relate to the site. I mean, we are aware that there have been some, some issues with the site. The state is working on that. They've done... Uh, They've tested five monitoring wells outside of the site because they, there is a sense that um, that the contamination is not occurring on site, but it's migrating from another source, and they're trying to determine that source. So, now correct me if I'm wrong, but to this day they haven't determined the source of the contamination on the property from any source, particularly. Is that correct? They they are still testing. So there's no conclusive answer as to where it's coming from. Not at this point. No. Thank you. Has the DES been contacted prior to this uh, application? Has anyone contacted DES from the city or from no. the owners? No, but this would be part of the feasibility study. Anybody working on it would be working with, uh, you know, whoever they'd be looking at those studies. Um, you can still, we've got properties that have activity use restrictions that have residential use. So, you know, vapor, vapor barrier, you know, applications, that kind of thing would all be part of what an architect would look at, as well as talking uh, to anybody about any outstanding issues. But it's been very slow. I, it's been going on now for two years. I mean, the phase two identified the issues in 20, 2018. And in 2019, they did the first series of testing on different sites. And then in uh, 2020, they sent a letter to one of the abutting property owners asking for site information. And it, it's just, it's molasses. Oh, um, yes, go ahead. One of the concerns I have is that uh, previously we gave a simple tax abatement to them based on their property condition and hazardous conditions that were there. And I know there's a degree of determining hazardous versus a true hazard to the individual. And out of that, uh, I know if they got a lower assessment, there was some tax forgiveness, or I'm not sure how we ended up calling it back in 2018, 2019. But there was a very big uh, outspoken in the community on this issue. And the way that being said, uh, I guess I would like to have seen that study in our packet since that was something that you had possession of. And we didn't get that in our packet. Which, which study is that? The study you had from 10 years ago. The initial study. I don't have an initial. Oh, I'm sorry. I no. Architects. 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 I apologize. Yeah. yeah. So 
the, it, this is a planning grant to look at whether housing is feasible on this site. So in my mind, I think that looks at all of it, including including any any existing hazardous waste on the site. So this is not an application for money to build it. It's just the feasibility. Just a feasibility. Uh, 48 units, I think. That's what, that's what they think. And that's a substantial uh, moderate to low income housing, I believe, that they want to put in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so moderate. Moderate. Um, being in the housing business, I can say that we don't have enough housing in Claremont, period. And it's going to become more and more of an issue as we try to move forward on anything if we can't put people in affordable, decent, safe housing. So I think that this is a good thing to look at. It's a good thing to look at anywhere in this community because we have a 0% vacancy rate. As soon as one of our apartments come open, it's rented well before the other people move out. The rents are going higher and higher in Claremont right now. Um, so if we want to develop Claremont and bring people to Claremont, they need to have a place to live. So I, I'm, I'm happy to see this is happening. I'm sure all the other issues that are issues will be resolved. And if not in this property, another property, but this is a need in Claremont. Is, uh, when you have 1.3% unemployment and zero vacancy in housing, I, I, the way I've been expressing it to the manager is we're at a point where we may see diminishing returns across the board, because if you can't grow a business, or bring a business here because nobody can get housing. It, it's kind of that, it, it's a vicious cycle. Um, okay. Uh, yes, Councilor O'Hearn, then City Manager Morris. You said that, uh, maybe, I, maybe I misunderstood. Did you say that the 10 year ago plan was for housing? Is that it, it, initially, the, there was a partnership that owned the building and they had initially looked at housing and had uh, uh, Chris Kennedy in, in Hanover had drawn up some, some preliminary housing plans and the partnership changed. They're not the same three partners. And I don't know what happened, but, it, but in any case, they are at a point now where they've looked at the building, they've thought about what they wanna do there and they really wanna go back to that idea of housing. So, so they can um, update the plans, update any engineering, update, any information on the site, look at whether they can they can put the 48 units in. It's a feasibility study. Yes, Paul. I just, I just want to comment that you know, uh, as long as I've been on the council and prior, it's been a hot topic, that location. And mm -hmm. I would like to have enough information to make an informed decision on this, just because, you know, well, I don't see it here tonight, but last time we had a discussion about this location, it was very uh, in-depth and hot. So uh, I don't want to just skirt over this. See, Manager Morris. Yes, I wanted to kind of follow up with what Council Councilor Matow was talking about in the, the the housing crisis that we are we are now in. I did meet with some business owners and Jocelyn Capel from the from the hospital yesterday and you know she's looking for staffing and she she openly discussed that she has staff that wants to come here to work at valley regional and she cannot get them here because there's nowhere for them to live so we're we're losing employees because of that i've also talked to other business leaders that said we're kind of like director merrill said we're at a critical point that if we can't start getting workers here then businesses may have to start looking at relocating to a different place so Housing is one of the number one issues that we need to be looking at. I know we've had many issues with this property in the past and some heated issues, but we really need to be looking at the future instead of having a vacant building sitting there and what we would like that building to turn into and become for the city. So. Council Stone. Well, I can clarify that you're incorrect city manager that it's not vacant. There's actually yeah. a few uh, rentals in it currently. And part of the tax payment process the last time was due to a lack of income rentals received that was stated i know that because i contacted pra personally yeah there are some rentals in there so i was not a vacant building uh, but, sitting there. But that was the match um i understand what happened in the past and the abatement process and and, and all of the 
you know, turmoil that it caused with citizens. I get that, but that's done. If we want to move this city forward and move this property forward, I mean, once if somebody goes in there and invests several million dollars, then their taxes are going to go up and, and those abatement issues are going to go away and we're going to raise a lot more money from this kind of property and other kind of properties if we develop them and we need housing in this community and all that we're being asked to do tonight is to approve the submission of a planning grant it's not even spending any taxpayer money it's asking to go and get a grant from cdbg to study the feasibility of this um that's it i mean it'll if they proceed it's going to go through the planning board um for a complete review um and I, I don't understand what the issue was with with moving forward to to look at a planning grant at this point in the game councilor contois yeah so um when we talked about 139 main street i spoke against cdbg grants because it was uh that whole program is going into the property ownership of a millionaire. I did not speak out against the Goddard block, which was the same millionaire, because there was a lot of housing that was potentially going in there. The Topstone building is in terrible shape. I don't know if Topstone Holding is a multi-million dollar corporation or whatever, but I think it's up to them to spend their money on a study and and, and Councillor Matow is wrong when she says it's not taxpayer money. It absolutely is taxpayer money, and I don't think we should be wasting it. And I'm not in favor of this at all. First, Councillor Stone, then Councillor Matow. Now, I pull the tax card. Currently, it's assessed at 186700 Now, we all know that I'm sitting up here doing the previous ones that a 79 is usually filed for, for at least seven years. At that assess rate. That's a very low assessment for that type of property to be locked in for seven years. So we're not going to be deriving a lot of tax money from that initial investment. Second of all, you have to look at the impact services of moderate and low income housing on our city services and school. Now, a lot of people forget that the school also comes out of the same pocket of the same taxpayers that reside in Clinton. I just want to make that very clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so bad. I just want to clarify that I meant local tax dollars. I understand CDBG is federal tax dollars, but if we don't spend and get CDBG money here, another community is going to get it. So it's not going to affect our local tax rate at all. Uh, the other thing is that City Manager Morris is absolutely correct because I feel these phone calls every day. There are professional people that want to move to Claremont that can't find a place to live. So every time we talk about housing in this community, everybody goes right down the rabbit hole with Section 8, and we're going to fill the schools up, and it's all bad. Well, that's not what housing is all about. Housing is a basic need that you need in a community for all levels of your, your citizens, people that are professionals, people with families, and the poor people. But right now, Claremont doesn't have it on any length, one, from one spectrum to the other. People want to move to this community and can't. And people that get jobs here at, at the local hospital have to go elsewhere. I had a nurse that called me the other day and she could not find a place to live and she was not going to be able to accept the job because there was no housing in Claremont. So that's a need we need to fix. And we have to stop every time we talk thinking about housing to say, oh, it's a terrible thing. We can't provide housing because it's going to draw all the poor people to Claremont. Guess what? There are people that live in Claremont already that can't find housing. Yeah. I was just going to note low moderate income. I can't find the sheet right here, but low moderate income in Sullivan County is a family of four. I believe it's sixty eight thousand. So um, the requirements for CBG are, are providing low and moderate income housing. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah, so Stone. Just to clarify, is that roughly 30 percent of their income? It's, it's Sullivan County. I think some people think it's just Claremont, but when they look at low moderate for CDBG purposes, it's the whole county. So based on county, not yeah, based on county. Thank you for clarifying that. And the thirty percent, I believe, is what you qualify for a subsidy. If you if you pay more than thirty percent of your income, then if there's a subsidy available with the property, um, then you can qualify for the subsidy. But not every low or moderate income property that's built comes with or is intended to have subsidies. That's right. Okay, okay Councillor O'Hara. 
Topstone Holdings was notified that of this tonight. Say that again. Topstones was notified of this tonight meeting, this on the agenda. Um, the the owner John Calkins, I don't believe he's he's not here, and I don't think he's on Zoom. Okay. So was he notified that we he was? It? Okay. He was. Yep. See, so we have one at ten B. They're logged in as Priscilla, but I don't know. We sent him a panelist invite today. Correct. We did. Yes. So if he's on there, he can speak, I guess, and come on, right? <laughs> not if he's under the attendees. He will oh. not be able to. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've had extensive discussion. Uh, I certainly, from my perspective, will agree that we aren't really talking about doing anything at this point other than looking at revising a set of plans. It's no resolution to move forward, to move to the side, to move anywhere. Uh, status quo remains the status quo, and what we're talking about is an amount of money so that Topstone Holding uh, can redo a set of plans or re-examine them, and they may come up with it's not feasible. It certainly is a, it's a valid, valid it. result. Yeah. I However, I don't remember if we opened the public hearing on this. One. Well, actually, I, I don't either. So, <laughs> <Let's> do <it. laughs> what, what I'm going to do? Sorry, I don't. There was a lot of discussion on this yeah. one. I don't see a no, no public <laughs> hearing yet. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm going to do, whether or not I had opened one originally, I'm going to open one now. Uh, this public hearing is open on this particular application, the one that we've been discussing. And it's open for any public comments uh, that people may care to to send to our our attention. Yes, Representative Stapleton. Walt Stapleton, Ward Three. Oh, it must have been maybe twenty five years ago when the Topstone Building was for sale. I actually. Uh, all Century 21 and it was taken through the building. And I was quite um, impressed with uh, how it was constructed and what I thought to be a solid nature of the, uh, of the overall structure, despite the leaking roof at the time affecting the roof and the top floors and the windows rather derelict. Um, I didn't have the wherewithal or the resources at that time to make an offer but I was interested in the building. Just as history, the, the um, railroad that I worked for, Claremont Concord, used to serve that building when it was a shoe factory. And um, I think that's a real asset for the community. Uh, and having housing in here has uh, already been expressed as a dramatic need. For 25,000, you can't get much anything anymore for 25,000, but this could be an indication that we could use to determine the feasibility. That's a good question to have answered. And it might also incentivize the state DEC to um, get back to work on uh, the hazmat problem. Um, the state is short of um, department people and employees, and maybe that's one of the reasons why there's been some delay. I don't know, just offering that out, but this might um, incentivize uh, the department to uh, pick this up and, and get it done. And I think that alone uh, is, is a good thing. And there's two advantages. Um, getting this building back in service with uh, low and income modern uh, homes, uh, housing is really a plus plus asset for the city. Uh, I can't think of any negative to it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? And seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing, bring it back to the council. Well, at this point, Councillor DeMars. I just, I find myself agreeing with uh, Councillor Comtois. I, I think that if, uh, if this owner, uh, is interested in pursuing this. Um, first of all, uh, I think you can be here tonight. And second of all, um, if it's a project that uh, somebody, you know, you're talking about a large project here, 
40 yard units. Uh, I don't think taxpayer money should be used this way. Council Stone, portion the table for the next meeting. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second by Councilor Roper. Okay, this will be the second item table this evening. Are we ready for a roll call vote? Councilor Hearn? Yes. Councilor Gerard? No. Councilor Demars? No. Sister no. Mayor Dameron? No. Councilor Matto? No. Councilor Contois? No. Councilor Stone? Yes. Failed. Okay. Yes. Councilor Matto? I'd like to read the motion for approval. Certainly. Uh, the city uh, motion to submit CDBG application for 101 Mulberry Street. Claremont City Council hereby approves submission of a planning study, community development block grant application for 101 Mulberry Street to the New Hampshire Community Development Finance Authority in an amount not to exceed 25,000 consistent with public hearing notice and to further authorize the city manager to sign and submit the application and upon approval of the CDBG applications, application to authorize the city manager to execute any documents which may be necessary to effectuate the CDBG contract and any amendments thereto. Thank you. Is there a second? I will second the discussion. We're at the council level. Are there uh, council comments from any councilor? Council Matto. I just want to kind of sum up what I've been saying that we have a great need in this community and as counselors we should do whatever we can to try to move these things forward now i understand some people think that private developers should not be looking to, for public money whether it's federal money or city money to help them move their projects forward but um, oftentimes developers have to look at the feasibility and the total cost of something and whether it's worth their risk and their money to make something go forward or not. And that's why a lot of people haven't, you know, my boss has often thought about doing another complex. We did one 60 units 30 years ago. But when you weigh the pros and the cons of the cost to do it versus whether you're gonna make your money back, that's when you have to figure, am I gonna do it in Claremont? So I don't have a problem with somebody looking for federal grant monies to, to, to look at that question and say, is it gonna work for me as a developer? And that benefits Claremont if the answer is yes, and this developer is gonna go forward and, and put their money in. But developers pull all kinds of things into their, their financing schemes to make things work for them um, in the end to make it a profitable thing for them. And that's why some people do develop and some people don't develop. So to say that anybody that uses a federal pool of money or tax credits or whatever it is to make a project feasible is not fair, is it's just not, you're not looking at it from a practical standpoint. I want to see housing developed in Claremont and I whatever it takes for us to help get there and get people to spend their private money to do it, I'm in favor of. So I think this is going to, for us to, to say, we're not going to allow this grant application to go forward is a mistake because we have a need in Claremont. We don't have anybody else stepping up to the plate at this point to, to solve those needs. So I think it's a win for Claremont. Yes, uh, Councilor O'Hearn. I will say that I am for housing Claremont, but my problem with this particular location is that um, one, they have seemed to drag their feet uh, for numerous years. Two, uh, do not have the the ability, or they had the ability. They had the ability to show up, or the ability to zoom in and uh, tell us and have us question them about this application. And they did not choose either one. So um, now that we're on the motion, I'm, I cannot support it because I wanted to have some questions answered. And I don't think it's the city's, uh, it's your job to be telling us how to sell this. Mm -hmm. It's up to the property owner to come here and sell I, it to us. I think he was told by the grant writer that he didn't need to attend, but. Okay, yeah. Councilor Gerard. Um, 
I, I've been sitting here listening to every, all the different counselors' comments and concerns, and I, I do understand the fact that this Topstone building has definitely been a concern for the community in the past. I look at it that we're looking at a feasibility study to hopefully see if this building is worth investing that type of money. We have a horrible situation with housing at this point. DES and every other agency will be well involved if we never get to that point where we're going to start to look at this. I, as much as I understand the concerns with the property at this point, I, I think we need to at least see if we can try to look at the property and hopefully maybe be able to do something for it. Thank you, Councilor Stone. This is this property has been the DES issue for what at least a decade that you're aware of. Long longer than that. So it's not going to be solved overnight. That's number one. Number two is, uh, I believe, the last time I checked into it with DES, one of the reasons for the lack of testing was due on the owner's part for not taking responsibility. Just like I believe they were as Bureau of Bureau Taxes. Are they tied up on our taxes now? Are they paid up? Yeah, they're fairly current on everything. They, they're they behind on the July 1st payment, but we're only two weeks, a couple weeks past that. But they've been, they've been making their payments and they're Given the, the history of the city and the interactions with Mr. Calkins, I think he would want to show up and be here to present his, his, his position on it. You know, let's be honest about it. Unless something has changed, I have a feeling that he would be looking at doing some type of federal grant money, which any federal grant money is taxpayer dollars, unless the government throws it on trees these days. So that is taxpayer dollars. That's number two. We've got to look at what's best for Clamont. And yes, we need housing. But well, what type of housing? When you take federal grant dollars, you're taking their their agenda and their requirements to keep those dollars. And some of those programs can be successful. Some of them may not be successful, but you got to look at the, the balance system of what you're increasing on this end if you're improving on this end. And I just think everybody should take a really good think about it because this is the first step in getting a complex in of 48 apartments that are moderate to low income. And that does impact schools and it does impact services. Further comments from anyone on the council? I'll make one final comment before calling for a vote. Certainly just simply my own opinion. Um, we've heard the words used that this is a substantial project and, and it would be if it is determined to be feasible. And from my perspective, I see no problem. It doesn't commit us to voting to authorize any further money on anything other than simply saying that we, we wish to go ahead with this planning grant and give uh, approval for the $25,000 to be spent to examine to determine if. And I, I don't think it's uh, making any determination that there's a predetermined yes or no to a just simply if. So with that, a roll call vote on the motion, please. Councilor Hearn. No. Councilor Gerard. Yes. Councilor DeMars. No. Sister Mayor Dameron. Yes. Councilor Matto. Yes. Councilor Contois. No. Councilor Stone. No. Fail. All right. I think we've successfully talked in all corners of this particular uh, CDBG grant application and idea. Uh, unless somebody has something that needs to be added, I, uh, I'm going to propose that we move along with our agenda. Did you do what? Pardon me? I didn't hear what you said. I said I'm proposing that we move along with our agenda and just move off from this item and finish it up. Yeah, so um, the, the motion to apply failed, so there's no need for the residential anti-displacement. Yeah. No. So the last item is just the housing and community development plan. Right. CDBG requires that you update that every three years and your three years is coming up. And what is in your packet, I basically mm -hmm. took out of the master plan. And it's found on page 162, I believe, of the uh, agenda. 